and welcome to uh, the Wellness Lounge, our podcast series. My name is Gillian O'Gorman and I am a health and wellness coach and today I am joined by a fellow coach but who focuses in a completely different area than me so I'm really interested in talking to this lady. Her name is Louise Platt and her business is My Career Coach. Louise, you're very welcome to the Wellness Lounge. Thank you for joining Hi. us. How are you, Gillian? I'm great, thank you. Looking forward to uh, what you have to tell us because a lot of people's careers have shifted. Either people have lost their jobs or people are now working from home or like myself, trying to work from home yeah. and getting used to that. Um, so uh, Louise, tell me a little bit about what my career coach actually does. What services do you offer? Um, so I suppose it is, uh, it's my career life. And it's, oh. a coaching, Sorry, <laughs> it's a coaching company. Um, I do a lot of co coaching and career guidance. So I'm a qualified guidance counsellor um, and qualified as a coach then later on top of that. And my background would be in business and in education, actually. And I have a lot of experience working in third level institutions uh, where I deliver workshops and I lecture in the area of career counselling and coaching models, etc. Um, and I also do some work uh, with some of the third level institutions around middle management and managing um, middle leadership in organizations. So oh, okay. um, that would be some part of my work. And then obviously a huge chunk would be in working one on one with people in a coaching or career counseling capacity. So um, I suppose it just depends because I have that flexibility between the two types of role. Okay. Some people will come to me for, you know, a period of time where they're working through, uh, you know, in in-house, um, on the job kind of career conundrums, as I might call them. And okay. then other people might be just completely finished, wanting to change and move on. And it's about kind of managing that transition out of a job and into a new space, which can be really difficult for people, I guess, and, and tricky emotionally as well as everything else, you know. Absolutely. OK, very good. And tell us. What is your understanding of what's happening to people with their careers during this crisis, basically, in effect, at the moment? Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot, I'm conscious there's a lot of information out there at the moment mm. on social media and a lot of psychological stuff, a lot of, you know, in-depth things that people really can't really come to, to grips with right now. Mm. So um, I think I'm going to try and keep it really simple in how I'm explaining what's going on for people. And one really easy way to understand is to have a look at a theory like Maslow's theory of motivation. And, you know, if you're not familiar with it, it basically says we look after our basic needs, you know, our house, our home, our shelter, our getting a job, having money. We look after those basic needs first and then we're motivated to um, achieve or fulfill the next level of needs, be the more psychological needs and on up to a kind of a higher level of um, self-actualization in the world. So. Okay. I think, and I, think, I think that's really interesting, actually, because a lot of people won't be aware of Maslow, but mm. people have been stopped. That's the thing. So yes. we've all been stopped. And now we're actually having to address those needs, aren't we? We're yes. actually having the time to address those needs. So sorry, go on, continue. Yeah. No, that's it. Exactly. We have been stopped. And that's the point exactly, Gillian, mm. you're picking up on it straight away because we're some people have been temporarily laid off and some people are now wondering if they're self-employed for example where's my next paycheck going to come from or how am I going to pay you know my rent on my premises or my mortgage or whatever so mm -hmm. some people will have been catapulted completely from maybe the middle levels there uh, right back down to some of the lower levels of need and that's very um, anxiety provoking for people um, and some of the work I have been doing in the last number of weeks has been around managing that anxiety in a work context and working okay. that out with people you know okay. um, other people in the short term you know their salary is covered and that basic stuff is still covered so you're having a different conversation with them because they're managing some of the more psychological needs and they're kind of saying, well, you know, I can pay my mortgage. Thankfully, I'm in maybe a good position. My company is going to pay my salary in the short term, yeah. but still possibly managing some of the anxiety. But what's going to happen long term um, and, and managing some of the psychological needs within there in a okay. career context, obviously. You know? OK, and um, you, you just mentioned there that you, you're, you are actively still in contact with clients, obviously, at the moment. Um, and you're getting a sense of the, the change in the, the type of work and the demands on people. And I suppose the mindset shift as well. So what's, what's it looking like out there in different companies and with your clients? 
Um, it's really, really interesting. I, I, in the last three weeks, I have spoken to people both um, on a client basis and um, in my own networks, my own business networks, my professional networks, and even family, friends, and you know, people I'm linked with. And across sectors, so telecoms, recruitment, construction, uh, banking and finance, uh, the charitable sector, the NGOs, no matter who I speak to, there's a real palpable feeling of um, loss of control there for people okay. and people's reality has just shifted dramatically um, and I think it's really important to kind of note that there's that shared experience because we're all now working from home and we're physically disconnected from not just our colleagues but you know our job and our our constructed reality in our head mm. and I think that can be really isolating for people and I think it's a really important point I'd like to get across to people today and in this podcast is mm. that that sense of shared experience that across sectors, and I'm in a bit of a privileged position that I've been able to talk to people from many areas, mm. um, that shared experience is really important to understand and maybe to, to help and take on board a little bit for people. Um, everybody is experiencing a loss of control. Everybody is in a position where they're firefighting and planning short term and planning hypothetically. And we don't have all of the data and all of the information. And that's the reality principle, you know? Yeah. And would you think it's realistic that people are trying to continue at the level they were delivering in their offices or face to face? So are people kind of putting very high expectations and not giving themselves yeah. that opportunity to adapt? I mean, you know, it's two, three weeks. So people are just trying to find their feet a little bit. So I think, you know, from people I've been thinking are talking with, um, there's a lot of stress around how they want to, to, to deliver. Whereas you kind of have to say, OK, take a breath. You know, this has happened. It's out of our control. So what can you actually start to do to, to adapt? You know, so what would you what what kind of advice or support are you offering people around that change? Um, so there's lots of things. And again, you know, some of these things are um, easy and simple to access and I suppose they are assuming that that basic level of need has been met for people and that they can actually pay their their, their mortgage and their bills and and that for me is where some of the real anxiety will be I would strongly encourage anybody in that kind of space to reach out there's a lot of organizations you at the wellness lounge Gillian I know yeah. between us both we have a wide network of people so please do reach out if you're in a place where you're not coping or dealing at a very at that level um you know on top of that, um, I've been working with people around literally every morning getting up and making a list. What can I control? What can I not control? Um, everybody I speak to is uh, planning short term. So people are very much making um, plans hour by hour and day by day. Any planning or strategies that have been devised by people in organizations right now are hypotheticals if they're starting to look at say a week as, as a period of time because wow. just the pace of change and the amount of information that's been loaded in is just really quick and constantly changing so people are planning for hypotheticals and then within two or three days they're planning for another set of hypotheticals as well so a lot of the work I'm doing with people is uh, being comfortable I think in that space and you know acknowledging and knowing that that's where it's at right now um, and that we are in a new version of reality because people are trying to bring their old version of reality and how they were in their job three weeks mm. ago into this version. Exactly. Um, yeah. It just perfect. doesn't fit. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. fit. So that's really interesting because that's something not only you can do in your job, but you can do that at home, I guess, as well in your personal really? life. What can you control and what you can't? You know, um, I was talking with uh, Dave Sheehan last week around keeping a routine. So that's something that people can incorporate into their routine. Okay. But we were also saying around the acceptance, you know, yeah. having to accept that this is the new reality for now um, yeah. and things will go back, but there's an opportunity to, to learn in this time as well. So with you and your clients and people that you're engaging with, would you be talking about the opportunities for learning and growth in this time? Yeah, absolutely. So I suppose that that opportunity for learning and growth is it's, it's always present. But what we tend to do in life is we fill ourselves and are with stuff to do mm. and you know from that's actually quite uh, rooted in psychodynamics actually and okay. there's, there's this notion of um you know hyperactivity or mania if you like and how that masks anxiety yeah. so i think we need to be conscious of that in our day-to-day -day at the moment because we miss that opportunity um mm. 
And certainly, if we want to ring fence in some way as best we can our work tasks, um, but not replicate them um, directly because it's, it's a different space that we're dealing with. Um, so, yeah, I think to answer the question, um, we certainly should be looking at golden moments and golden opportunities throughout the day and maybe giving ourselves a little bit of a break around what we're doing and how structured we are being and how structured we actually need to be and okay. perhaps what we might be missing in, in, in trying to be too structured um, and understand that that structure and that routine could, could potentially be masking just some of our anxiety about what's going on right now. Yes, absolutely. So looking for those golden moments. I like that. And that's something that I'm actually doing myself because I'm realizing where my productive hours are and it's not necessarily nine to five. I can start earlier and finish earlier and have those kind of intense productive hours and then more free time in the evening. And that's something that this this time has kind of given me um, awareness. So I think that reflection piece is, is really good. Yeah. So so the control list is something that people can do and um, what you can control, what you can control. What support or advice would you offer the people, uh, people who are working for themselves and have had to shut down their a little bit um, um, unaware of what the future holds are people who've had to be temporarily laid off and they don't know when they're going to be um, back on so what kind of um, advice or support would you give for those how can they best make use of this time okay um, so again I think the, the reality principle really in all of this that you know none of us have a crystal ball um, I have worked with clients in the past through recession and um, you know, unfortunately, we're back looking at that similar sure. kind of space right now. I don't know, Gillian, no more than any of us, where it's going to go. We're hopeful for a short term economic shock as opposed to some sort of prolonged recessionary cycle, if you like. Yes. Um, so for anybody who is at home um, and they're thinking, do I have a job? Will I not have a job? You know, there's there's the practicalities that have to be met and, and, and you know, the maybe signing on it maybe covering off those sure. basics or whatever and making changes that need to be changed practically or changes that need to be made practically mm -hmm. um but you know these cycles always end there's a beginning a middle and an end and when somebody feels ready i think it is about potentially looking forward to the time when this will be over um mm -hmm. and that at this point in time it's hard to predict when but people are hopeful i think of you know within this this year um getting back to some sort of normality uh, whether they go back with their business or not i i don't know mm -hmm. but they they may be looking at from a career point of view of making some changes in the medium to longer term so this can be a, an opportunity to really look at your skills look at upskilling look at perhaps doing that course you always wanted to do yes, yes. you know and researching things like that and it links back to the previous question you asked mm -hmm. me around you know, what are the things, those golden opportunities, golden moments and um, that people can carve out. So, you know, if you're sitting at home and you're kind of questioning what's going on with the business now, you're absolutely going to be firefighting emotionally on that. Um, sure. But the time, I think, will come and will emerge where you may be in a space to look forward in some way. And I guess that's where people like myself in a career coaching capacity come in um, is when somebody is ready to step into that space. Um, yes. And, and look forward and that's about retraining recoaching maybe maybe opening a different business maybe sidestepping uh, maybe pivoting in their career there's lots of um lots of pieces in there that, that can be explored and looked at you know yeah and i think you know again when people are ready um it gives people an opportunity as you said for a fresh start and it could be something that you haven't done before and there's so many online courses available i saw yesterday they're slashing the pl the prices on online courses um yes. my, my sister has signed up uh for three um because she's seeing this as an opportunity to really um when the time is right to go out there be skilled and equipped and use this time productively as well so yeah. to feel that she's constantly learning and growing because for her she has to feel like she's doing something to kind of navigate yeah. through this but yeah. again not everybody's ready it's kind of extremes out there but when they are ready you know talking to somebody like yourself going online or exploring it you feel like you're doing something and I think that's important you kind of move out of that anxiety that disempowering kind yes. of place to that kind of more taking control back as well yeah. so online courses and of course for 
for someone like myself, I don't know about you, Louise, do you work from home a lot? Are you used to this? Yeah, environment? I do both. I work from home and obviously now I'm here at home. And, okay. um, but I do work from an office as well. And I think that transition has been tricky for us, you know. Um, we're, I'm used to face to face with people. I, I, okay. I like that physical, sharing that physical space with somebody and interacting. Um, I've always worked online, but, it, it, you know, I'm, I, I, I'm certainly kind of feeling the pinch of, of, of not being in a, a physical space with somebody and sharing a piece of work in a coaching or a guidance counselling capacity you know yeah it can be different you know because you can kind of pick up with the energy and the tone and and yeah. the intention at times as well yeah. I've been on I've been on a few zoom calls myself um and then there can be a lapse and it can be you know it's just different yeah. it's a different dynamic so um I do think that um there's even learning in that and you know people are using zoom or skype or whatever whatsapp video or whatever it is facebook all the different platforms more and you have people that weren't really confident um in using technology so do you think that it's also an opportunity for people maybe to start after this delivering more work online and maybe going into kind of a an area that maybe they hadn't explored before yeah, absolutely. I actually, yesterday I had a really good conversation with um, somebody around leadership, you know, and leadership emerging from really, you know, um, unexpected places right now. And on the technology front, um, we were making the point that a lot of the younger generation are really kind of pushing the technology out and upwards to maybe some mm -hmm. of the older generation. So even simple things like my mum never used Zoom and yes. now she's like, Zooming me every five minutes, yes. you know, and I think that that's like leadership from maybe some of the younger generation out there, um, and helping you know other generations or people that are not as techy, tech savvy or tech mm. comfortable, um, and certainly there's people out there who have not been comfortable with the technology, um, and they've been forced into this space, you know. Yes, I yes. certainly, I. I certainly think that um, the tech sector and the online sector will, will, will hugely benefit from this. It's completely obvious to me and everybody that I'm working with and talking to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think online delivery, online delivery would be a lot more acceptable. Um, even things like my, some of my children's ballet classes, for example. Or yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Classes, all of those spaces. So, um, uh, yes, yes, absolute yes is the answer. Yeah, it, it will be interesting because it will give people even an opportunity further to split their business online and offline, you know what I mean? So it might be a, a, a been able to further reach as well, yeah, you know? Absolutely. I know in the wellness lounge, I brought together a group of therapists and uh, a lot of them had never done online yeah. before. So yeah. they're really seeing it because their business obviously is, you know, one-to-one -one meeting. Um, yes. And uh, they're seeing it as an opportunity now to engage more online, offer more yes. um, online as well. So they're really, really stepping out of their comfort zone. Um, yeah. So it's been exciting to be a part of that. And they feel even though that they're stressing around putting themselves yeah. out there online, they're really proud of themselves for actually picking up the phone, doing a video, putting content that will resonate yeah. online. And that's something now that that's a skill set that they're going to have going forward, whether they choose to kind of continue with it or not. Um, so, but with all that, and we're at home, so what advice would you give? Because obviously you're someone who works at home. I'm not someone that, you know, works at home. I go to an office every day. What advice do you give to people um, around working at home? How do we manage home life, especially people now who have their kids at home as well so your house becomes your home your workplace the school the gym all these different things so what advice would you give yeah so look I mean there, there's definitely not one size fits all Jane and I would just encourage people to suit themselves in their own context a hundred percent are there little tips that I feel are valuable yes and you know one of the main ones for me has been around ring fencing the physical spaces Mm -hmm. So, for example, I work in this room and I, I close the door and leave it in the evening and I don't come back in till the following day when I have to work again. Okay. Um, other people I've been working with, they're on their kitchen table in a communal space. So what I've been encouraging them to do is put your laptop in a box and put it away, put it under the table, put it in a cupboard, put it out yes. in the hall. You know, it's it's that that physical visual of work being intruding, you know, yeah. intruding into our home spaces. 
And I think to make that physical separation is really important. Don't leave your laptop on the kitchen table all evening while you're eating your dinner because mm. it's just there in the back of your mind. Yeah. It's unconscious. Even if it's not in your conscious space, it's in your unconscious space just by the mere fact that you can see the laptop or whatever reminds you of work or what you've been doing all day. Sure. So that would be one of the biggest things I would say to people is to be mindful of you know, work playing on their unconscious mind and, and to physically separate it if you can, room to yeah. room, or box it up and put it in a box. Get, a, get any kind of a box around the house or bag or whatever and, yeah. and put it away, you know? And that's yeah. one of the main things that I've been kind of working to kind of get that message out to people. Very like, good, yeah, very good. And I suppose planning, again, when you're doing your control and you're not control list, maybe planning your hours and kind of tuning yeah. into your productive hours. And I guess there's a level of discipline that's needed at home that we take for granted in the office. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess in, in that reality of the office, we have to be there between nine and five, don't mm. we? So whether we're feeling productive or not, we have to be there, say, nine to five or whatever your work hours are. Mm. Whereas at home, we have a lot more freedom. So sometimes it can be maybe around tuning into our productive hours, like I said, and we have the opportunity to tune into, you know, those spaces and those times when we may be more productive. So, mm. yes, you know, I would timetable out roughly where I'm at. But on any given day, it's allowing the flexibility and the freedom. So if I'm supposed to be working like one to four currently and mm -hmm. I'm not in the space I have three children at home at the moment as well and I have a husband running a business from home so okay. and a dog who's barking outside right now but <laughs> you know there's all these personal intrusions into this kind of work space and it's simply not possible to really strictly adhere to these routines in my view and mm -hmm. I think just allow yourself the space to go do you know what I'm close Closing this right now I'm going to go play in the garden for an hour with the kids I'm going to walk with the dog whatever it is yes, yes. and you know you may do more in an hour or two when you come back than yeah. sitting there unproductively for that hour where you were scheduled to be there you know giving yourself a hard time yeah yeah I think yeah. what I'm really getting from you here is that look we're in um a period of adaption so we can't be perfect and it's going to look different yeah. um it's going to look different it's going to feel different um so, so let's strive to do the best we can yeah. Um, and let's leave the perfection back in the office and we can kind of yeah. pick that up when, when we go back to our office space um, yeah. and do the best that you can. So not everybody has a, a separate room or an office, but just wherever yeah. you're choosing to, to work, to, yeah. to put it and clear it away, because mentally yeah. that's kind of giving you the mental space for other things. Go out for a walk if you can yeah. and do the best that you can. So that's, yeah. I think, yeah, I think that's really important. And I hope if people take anything away um, today that they'll take that um, um, away and also, I, I, I guess I like the phrase of economic shock as opposed to recession, because, you know, there can be little kind of ricochets, but we can go back and we will go back um, yeah. and using this time um, uh, efficiently, productively, upskill um and and uh, you know think about think about the future um you know work with a coach if you want to map that out if you feel that there's opportunity you know to kind of map out a new career and now you have the time and you know as a as a wellness coach i know the power in actually helping people around kind of like delving in and looking at at their goals as well so it could be a prime opportunity for people to Absolutely. say look this is unexpected, but I've always wanted to do this. How can I go, you know, around that? Or how can I actually build an online, Absolutely. you know, yeah, as well. And kind of, you know, looking at those goals as well. So, yeah. so thanks for all that, uh, Louise. Before, yeah. before we finish up, I'm asking all the guests in the Wellness Lounge um, a little bit about their own wellness. So what does wellness yeah. mean to you? Um, what does wellness mean to me? Mm. I, I do a yoga class every Monday and mm. that is it's just a non-negotiable. So um, I've, I've heard a lot of coaches and guidance counselors over the years talking about what's on your non-negotiable list. And mm. that's on my non-negotiable list. I would encourage people maybe to draft their own non-negotiable list. I do it with clients all the time. Good, so around okay. wellness, that's on my list. There's work things on there as well. But if that doesn't happen for me, you know, I miss it. It sets me up for the week. Um, I've always loved yoga before I had yes. the children. A um, little bit of Pilates, but but certainly yoga, but yoga and is your go-to that's my thing and um, in terms of kind of within the household here in the family like I bake I actually bake cakes it's my thing so lovely pop Nora Jones on oh and, nice uh, 
I just love, um, you know, her original album, yeah. Come Away With Me, and I play those songs, and um, I get baking, and the kids might join in, and we make a mess, and it's a bit of fun, and for me, that, that feeds my soul, and kind of mm. fills up that wellness cup, and um, it's, you know, that kind of interactive, kind of practical thing to do. I always yeah. feel like baking and cooking is like meditation because yeah. you're focusing on yeah. the ingredients. Sometimes you're focusing on where the ingredients come from. Yeah. And it really yeah. is that that point of focus is stopping everything else. So and that's to bring it. that into the kids life is fabulous as well. Yeah, that's it. So um, anything to do with food is good for me in terms of wellness. So whether <laughs> it's cooking it or preparing it. I mean, you know, I'm not talking about scallops every day or anything like that. But, you know, yeah. just real nutritious, home cooked kind of food. Um, I saw a really good documentary of the day actually and they talk about fire and how fire is so important to people um in the world and on the planet and that we kind of we grew up and evolved around a fire which was our cooking pit so oh. like how we eat and cook and share together around a fire is really in our dna and in our evolutionary kind of stages and process and, okay. and that really makes sense to me yeah. in terms of food and cooking and sharing um, and i think when, once i box away everything in the evening Mm -hmm. here after working or homeschooling or all the things that we are doing um mm -hmm. i think that's the space where we we, we we can and should meet back is over you know something that's cooked or baked at home and and, it's and again nice people have the time now and people are yeah. being brought families are being brought yeah. to, together so it's actually really really interesting how relationships are and the reconnection from you know people calling each other on zoom more doing the videos when we yeah. used to text and yeah. to, to families at home so it is really really interesting what this is actually um um helping us with or making yeah. us more more aware of and is there now in this time but you sound like you have a busy schedule with the homeschooling yeah. and yeah. sharing the office space obviously with your your husband and his business and but is there something that's in this time that you've been able to do more of for your wellness or less of for your wellness um uh, there definitely has been Julian, because as busy as we are with the children at home and our jobs and things going on um, the children's schedule has been wiped completely. Mm. So there is absolutely no activities uh, mm. that we physically have to go to right now. And mm. that has been for me uh, like revolutionary because I'm in the back of my mind, again, in my own conscious somewhere I've known for a while, there's too much on this schedule. Mm -hmm. so, so certainly there's a lot of activities have dropped. And as a result, my wellness has improved because I'm not now frantically running out every evening and late into the evening, you know, to go to the pool or whatever yeah. class or whatever. Yeah. So, so actually, I find that I'm doing acti activities that I really want to do and the children are doing things that they really want to do and that we can share with each other, you know. Wow, so, yeah, um, yeah. So like the cooking or the baking or whatever, but also yeah. there's some on online kind of fitness classes that the kids have been doing and I've been joining in with them. Yeah. And, you know, it's kind of that... It's, it's rebalancing all of that and that's really helping me and my wellness and well-being sure. I think. Yeah. Um, personally I have taken to doing a 10 minute arm workout every Oh week. very good yeah. <laughs> I found a really good girl online. I beat myself up for not going to the gym all the time because I haven't time so I have been doing this like it's literally 10 minutes yeah. I can hardly lift my arms today but it's great and um it's short it's easy a nice easy girl to listen to I found it on YouTube and yeah that, that's definitely been something extra I've been able to do that I wouldn't have been able to do that's um, brilliant that's brilliant and one thing that you're grateful for in this time one thing that I'm grateful for um I think I'm grateful just for being here with the family, I'm trying to really make the best of it, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm grateful that nobody in my house, thankfully, is sick or in my, mm -hmm. in my wider circle. And mm -hmm. I, I'm really grateful for that. At the same time, being conscious that some people are struggling more, you know, mm -hmm. so, so I do get up in the morning and think, you know what, I'm grateful for my health and um, generally that everybody's well. I'm grateful grateful that we're reasonably okay and settled at the moment at home and working from home and we found uh, you know our, our chi there somewhere at the moment call me next week and I might look at it <laughs> as you said it's, it's day by day short-term goals yeah day by day yeah yeah but I think accepting that you know it's going to be up and down and it's not going to be perfect I think yeah. that has helped in finding that kind of whatever middle state, you know? yeah, 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 yeah 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 so certainly grateful and the weather has been good right the it sun has, has been falling. the children have been out it's been yeah. lovely 
Yes, yes. Well, Louise Platt, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. Louise of My Career Life, based in Limerick, yes. You, um, yeah, but obviously yeah. you have clients around the country. So how Absolutely. can people find you, um, Louise, if they wanted to so contact I'm on you? All the, um, I'm on all the social media channels, mycareerlife.ie, uh, and then I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. You'll find me everywhere, find talking everywhere. and posting. And um, if anybody would like to reach out to me, I'm, I'm always available and happy to reply to your questions calls or emails so yeah that's, 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 that's great it. thank you i let you get back to is it the gym or work or baking or whatever you're doing this afternoon yeah. all of the above <laughs> yeah all of you both work for a couple of hours and then we'll, we'll wind down i okay. promise um, i promise some scooting the, in the afternoon with my daughter so i have to go out the scooter later so we'll, that'll be fun <laughs> <laughs> Louise, thanks a million and uh, thank you for your thank time you. and the information okay bye thanks, bye now.